Dead Rising 2 is similar to Dead Rising, but there are a few nuances. Chuck isn't a photojournalist, so taking pictures is completely removed from the equation. Instead, you'll have to collect cash to deal with a handful of greedy survivors. There will be several points where you're free to do as you please in Dead Rising 2, just like in Dead Rising, and these points are best used to get money for the survivor-related events, gather hidden zombrex, or just kill some zombies for PP. You can alleviate the stress of the money requirements by picking up cash while you run around slot machines or smashing any ATMs you come across. It may only be $100 or so, but it all adds up. You'll need to gather about twenty dollars to $30,000. Be sure to pick it up along the way as I won't be explicitly telling you to pick it up, as it is randomized. You'll also need to get Zombrex for Katie and a few other survivors if you want to save everyone. There will be enough story Zombrex for Katie conveniently just before she needs it. The rest of the Zombrex must be found or purchased from pawn shops around Fortune City. We will be picking up the free Zombrex when it's convenient. You can also purchase Zombrex from the pawn shop, but it is very expensive. It starts at 25,000 and goes up by 25,000 for each one you buy. You'll see that price won't really be a problem once we pass a certain point, however. This guide will focus on a fresh new game file, rescuing all the survivors, killing all the psychopaths, and completing all cases including overtime mode for the true ending. I'll be showing maps with routes at various points, they will be accompanied by this countdown timer. This is your opportunity to pause the video if you'd like to take a longer look, or use it to follow along during your playthrough. These maps will be available on recommendedplaying.com. I'll also be including a real-time clock in the corner here. This is just a way for you to keep up with where this all fits in the timeline of Dead Rising 2. Dead Rising 2 is pretty much on the nose an 8-hour playthrough when you take out loading screens and cutscenes. I have uploaded a full playthrough with these cut out, broken into 1-hour chunks. If you're ever struggling with a part in the guide and want to see how I did it, you can use the timer in the corner to go to the corresponding video. For instance, if something is at 4 hours and 20 minutes, that's going to be in part 5. The start of this game is probably the most difficult, as it's just very time sensitive and dense with things to do. As the game goes on, you get significantly more breathing room. If you are ever struggling, it may be worthwhile to restart the story. By restarting the story, you'll maintain Chuck's level and money. It will be easier to be successful this way, as you can repeat the easy ways to grind PP in the beginning for a stronger Chuck. When you start the game, you'll get your introductory cutscene and immediately be thrust into the Terror is Reality game show. You'll have to play a round of Slice Cycles, one of the multiplayer Terror is Reality games, but good luck finding a match these days. You don't have to win, but you should try to. Your goal is just to cut down as many zombies as you can. If you want to win the event, you'll want to aim for zombies that have balloons attached to them as they provide a bonus. Just accelerate with R2, and when you're reaching the end of the arena, press L2 to slow down and start turning, then accelerate again. It's a pretty easy minigame, but winning is worthwhile, and I've never lost it. For winning, you'll start with an additional $10,000, and that will be to our benefit. If you don't win, you can reset and try again, or you can just continue. It'll just be a little bit more intensive to farm the cash we need later. Afterwards, you can run to the bathrooms on your left to save if you wish, otherwise head for the elevator. Once you regain control, grab the bat on your right. Don't go out of your way to kill zombies here, just follow the waypoint and knock over any zombies in your way. Enter the green room on your left. You have Katie in your arms now, so that means no weapon. The kick is functionally useless here. Just run past everything and you should shove zombies out of the way just by getting close to them. Follow the waypoint. There's a pretty clear path for you to run. Exit the arena and you'll end up at the safe house. First things first is we need to get Katie Zombrex. If you don't get Katie Zombrex, it's a game over. So we need to get one and give it to her around 7am every single day. Unfortunately, you physically have to be in the security room during these times. The first dose here is easy enough to get. You can use the washroom to save if you wish, otherwise head down to the ventilation duct and back into Fortune City. There are several weapons to pick up here. The baseball bat and sledgehammer are your best options. The baseball bat is your best bet from getting to A to B as it knocks back zombies which can clear you a path. You can also grab a bag of chips by the trash bags for a healing item. On the newsstand to the left of the security room entrance, there is a consistent bowie knife on the roof. Remember this, as it will be an asset later. You can pick it up now if you want, but you'll be better served with the baseball bats and sledgehammer. Don't worry about killing zombies right now, it's not really worth the effort. There will be plenty of time for that later. Follow the waypoint. Try to dodge rather than kill the zombies here. There's coffee creamers in the large dice game about halfway to Roy's Mart if you need to heal. It's an easy way to get consistent healing items throughout the game. Also make sure to snag some cash by the slot machines near the car if there's any available. Then enter Roy's Mart on your left. You'll have to defeat three looters in here. They aren't overly difficult. Any of your weapons should be sufficient. 
The high damage on the sledgehammer works well and will knock them over after the two-hit combo. You should be able to hit both the looters in front of you and then be able to turn around and hit the looter behind you with a combo. This should let you stunlock them easily, killing them. Once they're dispatched, you'll get the pharmacy key. Talk to Denise and get her to join you, then make sure to head into the back room and pick up the Zombrex. There's also orange juice and a coffee creamer here if you need to heal. Give Denise a weapon, like a baseball bat, before heading out. You can replace it with something from the looters if you want. Now we just have to get back to the security room. Do not go in between the car and slot machines. Denise appears to get stuck in here and it's a pain to get her out. The survivor AI is much better in Dead Rising 2, but it's still not perfect. You will have to babysit a bit, just not nearly as much. Work your way back to the security room by hugging the right side of the mall. If you want to be efficient, you can enter Ye Old Toy Box on the right and grab a bag of marbles from the register and a stick pony from the racks at the back of the store. These are going to seem worthless right now, but they will come in handy shortly. Otherwise, continue to the security room by hugging the right side, going through the maintenance hallway, and enter the vents. You'll get 10,000 PP for rescuing Denise, which is a good start. Our current goal is to be a good dad. We have to wait until 7am to give Katie Zombrex, which opens up the first cases, so her hands are kind of tied. You can do a psychopath battle here, and it's a reasonable time to do it in New Game Plus. However, for maximum PP gains, it's best to wait for now. The best course of action right now is to do the majority of a side quest to get Katie gifts. This yields large PP rewards and is easy to accomplish in this time frame. It also has the added benefit of getting two achievements, Father of the Month and later Father of the Year if you complete all the gifts, which of course, we will. Try and get as many of these gifts given to Katie as possible. Getting this early PP is fundamental to an easier playthrough as it provides higher attack damage, movement speed, and probably most importantly, more inventory space. If you grab the marbles and the stick pony on the way back with Denise, give them to Katie now for a total of 30,000 PP. Save if you wish and head back out to Royal Flush Plaza via the vents. From now on, you should probably save every time you exit the safe house, so I won't mention it. I will mention a few saves along the way though, mostly before tight timings or psychopath battles. Your first trip for gifts should head to Styling Toddlers, which is immediately to the right after leaving the maintenance hallway. Here you want to pick up the beach ball first and pocket it before grabbing the giant stuffed elephant. Both of these are to your right after entering the store. The giant animals can't be pocketed, so you have to carry them back. Just dodge the zombies as best you can, even though the animals obstruct your vision like crazy. Try not to attack with the giant animals. You can use them a little bit as weapons, but if they're damaged, you can't deliver them to Katie. You'll know they're broken if you notice rips along the bottom of them. If this happens, you'll have to rezone to get another one and try again. Once you're back in the security room, head back to Katie and give her the elephant for 10,000 PP and then the beach ball for 15,000 PP. Head back out to Royal Flesh Plaza. Head across the food court to Astonishing Illusions. Inside, grab a robot bear and then take it back with you to the security room. Head to Katie and give her the robot bear for 15,000 PP. Head back out to Royal Flush Plaza and head left. If you didn't take the trip with Denise on the way back with the Zombrex, head to Ye Old Toy Box and grab the bag of marbles from the register and a stick pony from the racks at the back of the stairs. Then, go up the stairs and grab the giant stuffed donkey from Small Fry Duds. Then head back down to the safe house, enter the security room, and give this to Katie for 10,000 PP. Exit out onto Royal Flush Plaza again. Here it's likely you'll encounter two survivors, LaChandra and Gordon. Ignore LaChandra at the food court for now, instead head to your right and talk to Gordon. He'll start following you. Then meet up with LaChandra and get her to follow you before heading back to the safe house. This next one is fairly time sensitive. You can just wait around for a few minutes in real time as it's probably very close to 7am for Katie's Zombrex dose. If you want to maximize your time, you can go for one last giant animal for an additional 10,000 PP. You should have enough time to get it and return to Katie with just enough time to administer her Zombrex. Head up to the second level of Royal Flush Plaza just like last time and head to the Children's Castle. Break the window and steal the giant stuffed bull. Hoof it back down to the safe house, enter the security room and administer the Zombrex to Katie. Regardless of what you do, as soon as you give Katie the Zombrex, you'll initiate case 1-1 and be skipped forward in time to 9am. If you have a giant bull, run over and give it to Katie. Then head down to the vents to get the maintenance key by talking to Sullivan. 
Getting that extra animal should push you to level 7, otherwise you'll be level 6. This is a great starting point. Ideally you'll have gotten attack damage, inventory, and hopefully a speed increase. These will all help immensely moving forward. Case 1-2 may seem like a high priority, however we actually have a ton of time to complete it. Instead, we're gonna go for some survivors. Save your game if you wish, and leave the safe house. From now on, you'll have access to maintenance rooms and can craft combo weapons. Combo weapons are significantly stronger than standard weapons and yield more PP for kills. This basically renders standard weapons obsolete, except in a few very specific circumstances. Combo weapons will be the go-to for the rest of the play session, and fortunately, most of the best weapons are available right here by the security room. There is a standard loadout we can get very similar to the original Dead Rising. The weapons and food within the safe house does change day to day. It's not overly important what's in the safe house, but our standard loadout will come from items immediately accessible from the Royal Flush Plaza. As you leave, grab the baseball bat before the stairs, then enter the maintenance room on your right and make a nail bat by combining the nails and baseball bat. You'll do this automatically your first time through. It's a very strong and fairly durable weapon. You should be killing zombies in one or two hits with standard swings. This will be our bread and butter as it's a great way to clear out zombies in your way. Kills will reward 50 PP with 100 PP for the special kill by holding the attack button. On the room on the left side, you can pick up another box of nails and make a second nail bat. After exiting the tunnel, you can climb the newsstand to find a bowie knife. From here, break the glass and grab a pair of boxing gloves. Return to the maintenance room to combine these to make knife gloves. These are by far and wide one of the most overpowered weapons in the game. For combining it, you'll get a scratch card, so you'll only get 50% of the standard PP gains. However, that's still 150 a kill, and does significantly more damage than the nail bat. These are always the preference for psychopaths, but nail bats are still good for clearing zombies out of your path, and work on psychopaths in a pinch. Set your marker to lost. If you have the inventory to spare here, on the right side of the newsstand in the Royal Flush Plaza you can grab the Combat 2 magazine. This increases your PP gains from weapon kills by 10%. Magazines in Dead Rising 2 are not nearly as powerful as Dead Rising's books, but a few will be used throughout the game, mostly the ones related to survivors. This is an optional pickup, but it will help with gaining some levels in the early stages of the game. It's unlikely to make or break your playthrough though. Head exactly the same way you went to Roy's Mart and instead, exit out onto Fortune Park. If you can spare the inventory space, grab a water gun from the fountain on the way down. This is another gift for Katie and will net you another 10,000 PP. Try not to shoot it too much, if you fire too many shots you won't be able to give it to Katie, and it doesn't do any damage anyways. If you don't have the inventory for it now, don't worry, you can always pick it up on the way back. Head down the fountain and hang on to the right side. You'll eventually run into Chad. Clear the zombies around him and talk to him. His wife went missing by the arena. Continue following the marker for Lost and eventually you'll find her standing up on a kiosk. Clear the zombies around her and talk to her, eventually she'll join. Now set your marker to short sighted. You'll want to head back to the Royal Flush Plaza by retracing your steps. If you're low on weapons you can enter Cash Gordon's Casino. There's usually guards in here with handguns. Guns aren't the best option in Dead Rising 2, but will work in a pinch. If you need healing items, you can restock in the Paradise Platinum screens on the way back. There's a good amount of snacks and drinks by the right door. Enter Royal Flush Plaza, head left and up the stairs. At the top, turn left again and enter Children's Castle. Have a lengthy conversation with the elderly woman and eventually she'll join. You have to carry her, but conveniently this is actually one of the easiest ways to get past zombies with survivors. Head back to the safe house by heading to the other set of stairs on the top level. Then head down and hug the right wall until you reach the tunnel to the safe room. Then it's smooth sailing back to the vents. You'll rescue the survivors with a short cutscene. If you have the water gun, head to Katie in the security room and give it to her for more PP. Save if you wish before moving on. The timing here is a little tighter than I'd like, but it's doable and will give you maximum PP gains. Set your goal to one man's trash, we'll do it on the way to the Yucatan Casino. Exit the vents and restock on two nail bats and optionally one set of knife gloves. Head through Royal Flesh Plaza the same way you just did for the last set of survivors. Now exit out to Fortune Park. Follow the waypoint to Moe's Imaginations. Talk to the looter and you'll activate the pawn shops around Fortune City. 
pawn shop stock combo weapons, and Zombrex. You shouldn't need to buy any Zombrex for this playthrough as there's plenty of free ones hidden around and story Zombrex for rescuing survivors and doing requests. If you miss one, you might need to buy one so make sure to activate these shops here. Our next goal is the first psychopath battle. Head up towards the Yucatan Casino. Stop at the restrooms in the grotto in the fountain to save. You definitely want to take a save here. Maybe on a separate file because this part can be difficult. Once you're done, continue north to the Yucatan Casino. If you need to restock on weapons, on your left on the way to the Yucatan Casino is a maintenance room with materials to make knife gloves and a laser sword. Combine the bowie knife and boxing gloves inside the maintenance room, then grab the gems and the flashlight to make a laser sword. Once you're restocked, head into the Yucatan. As soon as you enter the casino, you'll start the battle. Ted is an absolute pushover. He starts off with iframes and he's invincible so hold back for a second. I think the nail bat actually works better here as you can chain combo him to lock him down. The knife gloves have a tendency to knock him over which actually prolongs the fight. You should just be able to wail on him with the nail bat to take him down regardless. He's a joke of an encounter. Snowflake is the real issue. Snowflake counts as both a survivor and as a present for Katie so you have to tame the tiger if you want to get the prestige of an all survivors playthrough. This part is just terrible, and I would argue that it's downright buggy. If it's not buggy, it's at least very precise, which is almost as bad. You basically need to set a stake between you and Snowflake and pray that the tiger eats it. There are three stakes, and they're all within the immediate vicinity. Two of them are up on the ledge, and one of them is simply hanging out on this rock. Your goal here is to grab a stake and wait for Snowflake to charge you. After attacking, Snowflake will run away for a brief period before charging you again. When the tiger's away, put a stake down between you and it by pressing down on the d-pad and walk backwards. Hopefully, instead of charging you, Snowflake will slow down and walk towards the stake to eat it. You'll have to repeat this process twice more with the remaining stakes. It's very easy to accidentally eat the stake. If you do accidentally eat the stake, you should probably just reset since it's a pain to get more and we're under a bit of a time crunch. I hope you took that save in the grotto. Also be very careful of attacking Snowflake. The three stakes are enough to get the tiger to full health, but if you hit it, you might not be able to. Expect Snowflake to straight up ignore stakes that you place, and for the fight to go very poorly. It's also really easy to die here. Snowflake does a lot of damage, it can easily take you down even if you're in the high 30s, and you're likely around level 10 at this point. It will take some time, a bit of luck, and some practice, but you should be able to pull through. It just may take a few attempts. Once you've tamed Snowflake, you'll want to head to the employee lounge to find Lenny. It's very easy to miss Lenny. Talk to him and you'll explain that you've tamed the tiger. He'll then run off to turn on some slot machines. Follow him to the restroom area and press the button to turn on the Mega Man 10 slot machines. These are the most lucrative slot machines to gamble at in the Yucatan. Afterwards, talk to him and get him to join you. Strongly recommended to take a save here at the restrooms. You don't want to redo that process of taming Snowflake again, trust me. You can also examine the movie poster to get the combo card for Freedom Bear, and you may as well, since you're here anyways. If you need healing items, you can take a quick detour to Baron Von Brot House on your right. There's plenty of alcohol here to stock up on. There's a warning though, if you drink too much alcohol, you can make Chuck sick and you'll start to throw up periodically for a short time. You can avoid this by making a few mixed drinks by using blenders strewn throughout the various bars around Fortune City. The best mixed drink combos are... Wine and Wine, which makes our old friend the Quick Step. This increases your movement speed and is useful in several places. Generally, these aren't as necessary as they were in Dead Rising 1, but it's good to have some on hand. Beer and Beer, which makes our new friend the Painkiller. This makes Chuck take 50% less damage for the duration. It's extremely good in Psychopath battles. Both of these will heal 8 units of health. Basically, these are the two best and easiest to make mixed drinks in Dead Rising 2. There are other ways to make these, but these are by far the easiest and most readily available. And it's easy to memorize. Wine, wine, beer, beer. It's simple. Baron Von Brothaus in the Yucatan Casino and Shots and Awe in the Americano Casino are the two easiest places to stock up on mixed drinks. Keep that in mind moving forward. Once you're finished, head over to the Palisades Mall by hanging a left and following the wall. In the Palisades, you'll immediately want to turn left to enter Shanks to find two survivors here. Kill the zombies attacking the old man, and then talk to Kenneth and Jack to get them to join you. You can equip your survivors with bowie knives or other blades in here. Now it's time to complete Case 1-2, Alive on Location. Set your marker and head through the Palisades. 
It's pretty much a straight shot, so just hold on to the right side. Enter Atlantica Casino. There's nothing for us in the Atlantica currently, so just continue through by holding on to the right side moving forward. Exit out to Fortune Park. Head towards the Fortune City Hotel. It's directly across from the exit of Atlantica Casino. Here you'll automatically meet Rebecca Chang, action news reporter. Talk to her to begin following her. She'll lead you to a restroom and you can save if you wish. When you're ready, talk to her again and follow her through the South Plaza to the Fortune City Arena. Try and avoid combat as your weapons are probably getting kinda low at this point. There are plenty of basic weapons to pick up along the way, like 2x4s and pipes, so you should be able to restock on some zombie deterrents along the way if you need to. In the arena, you can grab an axe on the right side if you need a weapon, then follow Rebecca to the back and try the door to unlock it. You'll get a cutscene. Immediately re-enter this room and pick up the rescue book. With our large posse of survivors, this is a huge net PP gain. Throw away something if you can't store it. This is important. We'll be hanging on to it for the majority of the game. It's fundamental to getting to near the level cap in one playthrough. From here, it's just a matter of returning these survivors safe and sound. Cut through the arena and head to the Americana Casino. You can take a save on the left in the washroom if you want, otherwise continue through the Americana Casino and enter the Royal Flush Plaza. Head left, enter the tunnel, and go into the vents. Enter to get a massive PP bonus from all these survivors with the rescue book. Once you're back in the safe house, make a beeline for the security room to complete the case. Once that's done, make sure to examine Snowflake for more bonus PP as the tiger counts as a gift for Katie. Chuck's really father of the year here. One more knocked off our list. Save if you want and then head back out. Set your marker to Workers' Compensation and head back to the Americano Casino by taking the doors on your right. Restock on nail bats and knife gloves if you need them. You can examine the movie poster here to get the combo card for tenderizers by mixing MMA gloves and nails. The tenderizers aren't great and you're better off using nail bats or knife gloves instead. Head into the Americana Casino. Follow the waypoint and you'll find Brittany and Stuart have barricaded themselves in and are looting slot machines. Pick up some of the drink carts or benches and throw them to get inside. You'll need to knock some sense into Stuart, so unequip your weapons by pressing down on the D-pad and giving him a few knocks with your fists. He'll eventually come to his senses. Talk to both of them to get them to join you. Now set your marker to Luscious Lady. Follow the waypoint to the Americano Casino security room. Inside you'll find Kristen, who is completely drunk. You'll have to carry her. Exit the Americano Casino room and head to your left and enter Royal Flush Plaza. Head back to the safe house by heading left and going through the tunnel to enter the vents. Our next goal is to rescue another set of survivors before some of the psychopath battles. You might not have it showing up yet, but we want to do Barn Burner, which is in the Fortune City Arena. Exit the safe house and head right to enter the Americano Casino. Set your marker to Barn Burner as soon as it comes up. Make sure to restock on weapons here, including at least one pair of knife gloves and probably two nail bats. Inside the Americano Casino, since you're not currently escorting anyone, it's a good idea to restock on healing items as well. Head to the bar in the center and make some mixed drinks using two beers or two wines. Hang on to these if you can, we'll need them shortly. Now head towards the Fortune City Arena. Whatever you do, do not enter the restrooms on the right here just yet. It contains a psychopath battle and we want to be as high level as possible before we do it. Cross through to the Fortune City Arena. Follow your waypoint and head to the back and through the green rooms from the very start of the game. In the back, you'll find a fire. Clear any zombies around and pick up the fire extinguisher behind you. Use this to put out the fires before talking to Elrod and Trixie Lin. Eventually, they'll follow you. If you need to heal, use the healing items in here. Head back to the main arena area and turn to your right to enter the South Plaza. Set your marker for Brains Over Brawn and head to the Ultimate Playhouse store. Inside you'll find four survivors. There's a lengthy conversation here if you don't have a female survivor in your posse. Thankfully we have Trixie Lin, so they're quick to join. From here you'll want to double back exactly the way you came. Avoid entering the Platinum Strip or going into the restrooms at Americano Casino for now. Just head back through the South Plaza to the arena. 
then through the arena and into the Americana Casino, then through the Americana Casino and into Royal Flush Plaza before heading back through the tunnel to the vents in the safe house. Head back to the security room. You should be back in time to complete case 2-1, Sign of Life. You'll probably want to save here. Now that the easy survivors are out of the way, you should be around level 16 at this point. It's time to do the next Psychopath Battles. You will have adequate time to do this and the case. Set your marker to Meet the Contestants. Restock on weapons, including preferably at least two pairs of knife gloves and two nail bats. You can also restock on healing items by going to the Americana Casino to mix some quick steps or painkillers. Otherwise, head through Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park, head to the save point in the center and save. Now head south to the Fortune City Arena and you'll encounter Leon from the beginning of the game. You'll get a bite key after the cutscene and it's recommended you jump on it. The strategy I use for Leon requires us to go towards the Grotto save point. Head there now. Leon is ridiculous to take on while he's on his slice cycle and you're out in the open. The goal is basically to goad him into crashing into a fence. Then you jump over the fence avoiding his attack and you should have an opportunity to hit him from over the fence or you can jump back over and get a hit on him as he taunts you after the crash. If you're lucky he'll get caught in the fence and you'll be able to collect a free win. Otherwise you'll have to repeat the process of goading him into crashing into the fences. Leon does seem to get stuck in the fences fairly frequently, so it's one of the best ways to take him down. I've consistently been able to get him stuck, it just takes a few attempts to do it. Once he's dealt with, you unlock Leon's trailer and the ability to mod bikes. This can be fun, but isn't overly useful to this playthrough. Your position will reset to Leon's trailer by the Yucatan Casino. Set your marker to Chuck the Roll Model. Head to the restrooms in the center of Fortune Park to save your game. If you're out of weapons, head back to Royal Flush Plaza and restock at the maintenance room by the safe house before heading to the Americano Casino. If you're okay for weapons, you can just head straight for the Americano Casino. Here you should absolutely take a stop by the bar in the center of the Americano Casino and mix several drinks. Quick steps are good, as are painkillers. Then follow your waypoint to the Americana Casino restrooms. Inside, you'll encounter the psychopath, Brandon. Brandon will pull a Scooby-Doo on you here and jump in and out of various stalls. He uses it as a way to teleport around. This may seem random, but he actually almost always comes from behind you, which actually makes this very predictable. When Brandon jumps into a stall, run across the set of stalls to get him to come out from behind you. Try to position your camera so that Chuck is running towards it. That way, you can see when Brandon jumps out of a stall. Then turn and clean his clock with your weapon of choice. I prefer nail bats to the knife gloves here, but you can use whatever you prefer. If you're well stocked on quick steps and painkillers, you can basically trade blows with him and come out on top. Every psychopath in Dead Rising 2 has a counter attack if you're comboing them, which will knock you over. It's best to get a few hits in and then move out and wait for another opportunity to attack. This fight's actually pretty long. You'll have to repeat the process of Brandon jumping in and out of stalls and taking hits on him when you can. Eventually, you'll come out on top. It's actually not very difficult, especially when you're high level like we are. After the fight, kill any zombies in here, then untie Vicky and save your game. Exit the restrooms and head left. Enter Benny's Barbecue Shack and head up to the second floor. Here, you can actually get onto the lights and access a secret area. Climb onto the counter and jump from light to light. Platforming is definitely not Dead Rising 2's strong suit. It can be difficult to pull off and may take a few attempts. My advice is to jump a lot earlier than you'd expect to since Chuck will grab onto ledges. If you jump too late, Chuck will just plummet like a rock, so try and jump early. Once you're across the lights, you'll land on an alcove above the security room near the Royal Flush Plaza entrance. Here there's a sword which you can optionally pick up, cash which you should definitely pick up, Zombrex which you must pick up, and a giant stuffed rabbit which is one of the gifts for Katie. Pick it all up. We need the Zombrex shortly. Grab the giant stuffed rabbit and jump down to ground level. Vicky should be fine. She won't be able to climb up the lights like you can, but will follow you along the ground, and she should be ignored by the zombies. She'll meet up with you at the bottom. If she doesn't, you'll have to go back and get her. Since landing probably made you drop the stuffed rabbit, pick it up again and head back to the Royal Flush Plaza. Head back to the safe house via the vents. Now take the giant stuffed rabbit to Katie and fulfill the second to last gift for her.
Set your marker for code blue, but there is an unlisted case we have to do first. Head out to Royal Flush Plaza. Get to the stairs on the left side and head up to the second floor. Enter Wiley's Travels to find an injured man named Jared. Jump over the barricade and give him the Zombrex you found in the Americana Casino and he'll join up with you. Give Jared your shoulder and get him back to the safe house. Leave the safe house now and re-enter Royal Flush Plaza. Head straight through and enter Fortune Park. Head left and follow your marker up the Silver Strip. Enter One Little Duck Bingo. As you get close, Tim Duggan will die. You can't save him no matter what, so don't worry about it. Talk to Sven and get him to join up with you. Behind the counter here there is Cash and the Leadership Magazine. This is a useful book, but it's kind of hard to quantify. It improves survivors. Most notably, any survivors that have limps or require you to assist or carry them will be able to move normally, with the exception of one. This is a good pickup if you can spare the inventory. If you need the inventory space, don't worry about dropping it. It'll always be here and we can come back and get it again. Head back to the safe house with Sven. You can head through Slot Ranch Casino or through the Platinum Strip to get back to the Royal Flush Plaza. Then enter the tunnel and zone through the vents. Sven will reward you with a Zombrex for saving him. Take a save here. Since this is the most time sensitive thing we have to do, it's a good time to do Case 2-2, Ticket to Ride. You'll want to restock on weapons. You will want at least one pair of knife gloves, preferably two if you can get them easily. There is ample healing items in Ticket to Ride, so you should be fine on those. Set your marker for Ticket to Ride. Head through Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park. Take a save at the restrooms at the center if you wish before heading to the Atlantica Casino. Get through the Atlantica and enter the Palisades. Follow your marker to the very back of the Palisades Mall and enter the service tunnel. The route here is linear. Follow the stairs and you'll eventually come across a restroom. Save if you wish before heading forward. Once you cross the yellow and black line, you have to fight a bunch of mercenaries. You should be around level 19 at this point. With knife gloves and a few attack ups in the bank, you should be killing these mercenaries in one swipe. You may have to do a follow up swing to take them down depending on your attack ups. There isn't a lot of strategy here unfortunately. Search and destroy all the mercenaries. They aren't actually as threatening as they appear and you can body tank a lot of the bullets they shoot and come out ahead. Just rush them all down, take a swing at them, and you'll win. Immediately after you'll find yourself on a motorcycle and chasing down a train. Your goal here is to chase the train and get close enough so that you can jump off a ramp and land on it. Try and avoid zombies to help maintain your speed. Also try and avoid the debris that the mercs will throw at you. Eventually you'll be able to catch up and jump off a ramp and get on the train. It's not a big deal, but it seems like you just have to go for a certain distance. On the train, this is a linear hallway. Just like before, rush these mercenaries down and slice them with knife gloves. There's a bunch of healing items in the first train car, so feel free to return if you ever need to heal. This part's actually pretty easy. Just cleave through all the mercenaries and reach the engine car and enter the door. You'll be back on the ground. This is the best time to get the free Zombrex that's down here. You can grab the service cart or just walk back this way. You actually pass the Zombrex while chasing the train so that's a little hint. 180 around and turn left down this tunnel. It's a fair distance but as long as you hold to the left side you'll be fine. Eventually you'll hit a ramp up and the Zombrex. It's very close to a maintenance room that also contains the materials to make a nail bat so make sure to get a refresh there if you need one. Now that you have the Zombrex, it's time to get out of here. Set your marker to Taste Like Chicken and continue down the tunnels holding to the left side until you reach the loading bay. Enter the gate and head to your left to grab some orange juice if you need a heal and use the restrooms to save. Head back up these stairs and use the door to enter the Palisades again. Now cross the Palisades and enter the Yucatan Casino. It's straight ahead from the service exit. There's a Psychopath battle coming up so head to Baron Von Brot House at the back of the Yucatan to stock up on Quick Steps and Painkillers. Quick Steps are probably the preference for this fight. Take the opportunity to save as well since it's nearby and Psychopaths can go sideways even though Dead Rising 2 is pretty easy. When you're ready, follow the waypoint down to the food court. Once you're in the food court, just hold to your right and enter Cucina Donichi. Here you'll engage Chef Anton in a battle. This battle isn't actually that difficult. Just run up to him and unload on him with a bat. He'll counter hit you with a frying pan after a few hits. Then he'll run to the nearest food item and start eating to recover health. Just chase after him, smack him around, and repeat this process. Quick steps actually speed up the process as the faster you get to Antoine, the quicker the fight goes as he won't be able to recover as much health. 
You'll spend most of the time just chasing him around as he gorges himself on food. The nail bat works pretty well, as do knife gloves if you have any left over. Levels really do dictate the difficulty of Dead Rising, and if you're following the guide, you should be nearly level 20 right now, which makes things very easy. Once Anton's dead, head to the back room and talk to Cinda. She won't go with you until you find Jasper. Jasper is holed up in Hamburger Fiefdom, which is directly across from where you are. Just head across the food court to Lombardi's and lean left. Jump onto the snack machines and climb onto Lombardi's to reach Jasper, who's hanging out at Hamburger Fiefdom. Talk to Jasper and get him to join you, then double back to Cinda and get her to join you. Around this time, you should get notified of a scoop called Rock Heroes. When you do, set your marker to it. The stage is on the silver strip, so head through the food court and enter Slot Ranch Casino. Just move forward, hanging on your left, and work your way through the casino to the exit onto the silver strip. Now turn left and follow the waypoint to reach the stage. Jump onto it and talk to the band members and eventually they'll join you. There's also an unlisted case available now in the South Plaza, so that's our next target. Head down the silver strip and enter the restrooms at the center of the park to save if you wish. Otherwise, head for the Fortune City Hotel entrance. Move forward and head through the double doors to enter the South Plaza. Keep moving forward, but keep to the right. You'll eventually find Willa and Terry. Clear the zombies from Terry and talk to her. She won't join you without Willa. Jump up the scaffolding to talk to Willa and get her to join. You'll have to carry her. Help her out, jump down the scaffolding, and then talk to Terry. She'll join up with you. Don't forget to talk to Terry. It's really easy to forget about her and accidentally leave her behind. Carry Willa and continue on the path to the South Plaza. Our goal now is just to get everyone back to the safe house. Continue hanging on the right side and move forward. You may encounter some looters down here, and you may have to drop Willa to deal with them. Continue forwards and enter the Fortune City Arena. Just plow through the arena. It's a straight shot to the Americana Casino. In the Americana Casino, just head straight for Royal Flush Plaza. You should be pretty familiar with this at this point. Now in Royal Flush Plaza, hang left to reach the maintenance tunnel, head for the vents. You'll likely get a call very close to the safe house saying it's 7am and Katie needs Zombrex. Continue onwards and enter the safe house. You should get a combo card from Floyd here as a bonus reward for your troubles. Head up to the security room and give Katie her next dose of Zombrex. Next up is a short and sweet little unlisted case, but you need to wait until 8am for them to spawn. Restock on weapons at the maintenance room, head left and head out into Fortune Park to kill some zombies. Just hang around the entrance to Royal Flush Plaza. You likely have about 20 in-game minutes here. Just kill some zombies with combo weapons to gain some bonus PP while you wait. Once it's 8am, re-enter Royal Flush Plaza. Inside, head up the stairs on the right side and enter Kathy's space. You'll find three women in there. Talk to them and they'll agree to join you, but only if you carry their belongings. These survivors are special in that they won't respond to orders. Instead, they will only follow the package. You can throw it to cause them to run towards it if you need to clear a path. They will stop and take a swing at you if you do this though, so it's easier to just hang on to it. Cross the second floor of Royal Flush Plaza and head down the escalator. Hug the right wall and make your way back to the safe house like you've done a bunch of times before. You have a bit of time to kill here now. It will be roughly 5 to 10 real time minutes. You can realistically use this time for whatever you want. My suggestion for how to use this time is to stock up on knife gloves and nail bats. Then enter the Americano Casino and run around looking for cash. Any machines that have cash near them are broken and will always yield winning bets. Use these machines until they lose before moving on. The goal is to get at least $30,000 during this time frame. It does sound like a lot of money, but it goes by pretty quickly, especially if you've been diligent about collecting money along the way. If you missed one of the giant dolls for Katie, now would be a good opportunity to get it as well. Regardless, be prepared with weapons and healing items and be back at the safe house in time to complete Case 3-1, Boomtown, and start Case 3-2, Run for the Money. Set your marker to run for the money. Restock at the maintenance room if you need weapons and head to the Americano Casino on your right. Immediately on your left you'll find the first drill and mercenaries. These are just like the ones on the train and you should be able to take them out with a single swing from knife gloves. There's also ample healing nearby at the bar but you should be resilient enough to slaughter everything in here without issue. Chuck really just shrugs off bullets like a beast in this game. Once you're clear, pick up the sledgehammer and use it to destroy the drill. Combo weapons take a long time to destroy this drill and the sledgehammer is actually very effective so you should try to bring it with you if you can spare the inventory space for it. Head to the next waypoint which should take you back to Royal Flush Plaza. Now just run through Royal Flush Plaza and get to Slot Ranch Casino. Head to the back of Slot Ranch Casino and repeat the process of killing all the mercenaries. Once you're done that, destroy the drill and leave. Next up is the Yucatan Casino. Head left out of the cashier and straight through the food court. 
Enter Yucatan Casino and make a straight shot to the third drill. Same thing here. Take out the mercenaries and destroy the drill. You can get healing items at Baron Von Broadhaus and or save at the restrooms if you need to. The final drill is at the Atlantica Casino, but they're actually drilling from the Fortune Park side. Exit out of the Yucatan onto the Silver Strip. Head down, following the waypoint until you find a black van on your left. Repeat the same process. Destroy the mercenaries and then take out the van. The van has a lot of health, so it will take a while to take down. Once the van's down, the case is over. I would recommend returning to the safe house to restock on weapons and supplies. There's ample time to make this return trip before we do the next set of cases and scoops. There's another psychopath coming up, so make sure to stock up on any necessities. Knife gloves and possibly a few mixed drinks from the Americano Casino Bar are a good idea here. Once you're done, set your waypoint to Everyone Loves Slappy and head for Palisades Mall. Run through the Royal Flush Plaza and either go through the Slot Ranch Casino and the Food Court to get to the Yucatan, or go through Fortune Park and the Silver Strip to get to the Yucatan. Once we're in the Yucatan, head to the large slot machine display in the center. You need to climb this to reach a hidden Zombrex. You should pick this up now. This is your final chance to save and restock on healing items at Baron Von Broadhouse before the Psychopath battle. Otherwise, head to the Palisades. Follow the waypoint up the stairs. Turn left and approach the dead mascot to trigger a psychopath battle. Slappy can be pretty difficult, and very frustrating. Fortunately, he has a very predictable and exploitable AI pattern. Setting it up is a bit difficult, but it trivializes the entire encounter. What you want to do is perform a drop kick by jumping and holding the attack button. If you hit Slappy like this, he'll sit down, stunned. This is fairly difficult to pull off, but you'll eventually land a successful drop kick on him. It may take several attempts. More than I'd care to admit. Now you should use your knife gloves to hit him 3-4 to four times. At this point, he'll get up and start spraying fire while spinning around. Just get clear of him, you can jump away or use the dodge roll. After he's done spinning, he'll be dizzy and he'll stop. Once he's stunned, run up and drop kick him again to knock him over. Congratulations, Slappy is now trapped in an AI loop. A difficult fight is completely trivialized. Keep repeating the steps of hitting him a couple times, jumping out of the way, waiting for him to finish spinning, drop kicking him, and attacking him again. You'll win without much issue. After the battle, you'll get a combo card. Immediately head right into Lee's Fine Liquors. Heal yourself if you're damaged, but make sure to grab a bottle of something. We need it shortly. Set your marker to Wilted Flower. Head down the stairs and turn left to enter the Venus Touch. Head to the back room and find Lynette, who's sunburnt from the tanning bed. Also, there's something else kind of weird in here. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Give her the bottle of liquor from upstairs and talk to her and she'll join. She's slow, so carry her. Exit the Venus Touch and head to your right and back up the stairs. Head towards your marker for Lynette's passage and enter brand new you on the right side. Head into the back room and enter the changing rooms to take the shortcut to the restrooms in Royal Flush Plaza. This is a great shortcut and we will be using it frequently. Now just head back to the safe house with Lynette. You have about three in-game hours to kill here before the next Psychopath battle. Recommendations are to stock up on mixed drinks at the bar in the Americano Casino and get situated with at least two pairs of knife gloves. If you're still behind on the $30,000 in cash you need, you can gather money fairly easily by going to the now-open cashiers in Americano Casino. There's a consistent $900 on the desk to your right immediately after entering. Gather this money and then exit back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Re-enter and grab the money again. Repeat this as often as you'd like for a fairly quick and consistent way to get cash. We're gonna need a minimum of $30,000, so hopefully you have it by now. Repeating this step is a very easy way to harvest the cash and kill some time if you need to. Otherwise, kill some zombies and have a full inventory full of quick steps, painkillers, and knife gloves as you approach 5pm, at which point you should head to a restroom and save. At 5pm, the Here Comes the Groom scoop becomes available. Set your marker and head out of Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park. Head to the center of Fortune Park and use the restrooms to save. Then follow the marker up to the Silver Strip. Stay on the left side and you'll eventually reach the Swept Away Chapel. This is easy to spot, the entryway looks like a giant heart, you can't miss it. Enter Swept Away and prepare for a boss fight. Randy can be a difficult psychopath because he deals a lot of damage. Of course, the strategy I use is basically just to trade blows with him, like every other psychopath in Dead Rising 2. Every time he hits you with his chainsaw, he'll follow up with a questionable gesture. This allows you time to either run away and heal, or to smack him around with knife gloves. You can use this to your advantage to simply trade blows with him. You should be around level 25 at this point, and have a lot of health and damage. 
Mixed drinks like painkillers will allow you to trade blows effectively as it halves the damage you take. Not a great strategy or a free win, but most of Dead Rising 2's psychopath battles are actually pretty easy. Afterwards, head back to the altar and talk to Danny. She'll join you. Simply escort her back to the safe house by going through the Silver Strip in Fortune Park to Royal Flush Plaza, or by cutting through Slot Ranch Casino to Royal Flush Plaza, then head through Royal Flush Plaza and get to the safe house as you've done a bunch of times before. At 7pm, another unlisted scoop becomes available. For this one, we need to be carrying a gun. It should be around 6.10 to 6.30 at this point, depending on how your battle with Randy went, so we have ample opportunity to get one. From the safe house, head left and use the shortcut that Lynette showed you to get to the second level of the Palisades. Head to the High Noon Shooting Range, which is the store at the very bottom of the second level. Grab a gun of your choice. Any of them should be fine. You may want to grab a few different varieties just as a precaution. Then head down the stairs and head to the Atlantica Casino. Head through and check your watch. If it's not 7pm yet, hang around killing zombies or collecting money in the Atlantica. At 7pm, zone out onto Fortune Park from Atlantica Casino. Immediately on your left you should see Yanis. Equip your gun and talk to him. He should join up almost immediately. Simply cross Fortune Park and head into Royal Flush Plaza, then return to the safe house with Yanis. Your reward for rescuing him will be $70,000. This is actually very important, as coming up shortly we will need $100,000. This 70 grand should put you over that threshold if you've been diligent about collecting money. Another unlisted scoop happens at 8pm. You probably have some time to kill here. This scoop is quick and occurs in Royal Flush Plaza. Use the time to restock on weapons or kill zombies. From the safe house, head through Royal Flush Plaza and head out to Fortune Park. Kill zombies and check your watch. At 8pm, rezone into Royal Flush Plaza, then head for Sport Trance on the ground floor. You can also get there by going up the stairs and entering Sport Trance from the top and heading down the stairs to the back. You'll encounter Luz here who will be fighting a horde of zombies. Simply clear them out and talk to her. She'll join up without a fuss and you can take her to the safe house. It's a pretty routine trip at this point. You have some more time to kill here. It should be roughly two and a half in-game hours. This is a prime time to gather more cash if you still need to hit that $100,000 mark. We need it following this next set of Psychopath battles. Otherwise, kill more zombies and restock on weapons and healing items before the Psychopath battle. Stay close to the safe house for now because around 9.30pm you should get a call about Stuart trying to mutiny. You don't need to do anything special here. Simply return to the safe house when you get the call and talk him down. When you're done you'll get 10,000 PP for your troubles. Then you're free to do as you please until 11pm. Get at least 3 pairs of knife gloves, then head to the Yucatan Casino and make mixed drinks at Baron Von Broadhouse. Quick steps and painkillers will be the preference, as always, and the supplies are readily available here. You'll get a call at 11pm and it's time for case 4-1. Make sure to save at the restrooms in the Yucatan before heading up the escalators to the Shoal nightclub. Cleave through the zombie horde at Shoal and enter. You'll get a cutscene revealing who Rebecca's sources are. You only need to kill one of the twins. It's wasted effort to go after both of them. Pick whichever you prefer. I go after Crystal because Amber is best girl. Of course, I do tend to just damage them both. That way, if I get more chances to hit one, both of them are prime opportunities to be taken down. The twins spend a lot of time running around, so having a quick step active is really helpful. One of them will tend to distract you, and the other twin will come at you from behind or from the side. With quick steps and painkillers, as well as knife gloves, you should be able to make short work of them just by trading hits. Our strategy hasn't changed. There are healing items around on the ground if you run out of mixed drinks and you need to heal. Otherwise, it's a fairly standard psychopath battle. Just get a couple hits in, back out, repeat the process. After the fight, set your marker to mail order Zombrex. Head back to Baron Von Broadhouse to restock on mixed drinks and save at the restroom if you need to. Then head to the Palisades, take the stairs up, and head for the shortcut at Brand New U. On the way you can stop by Stan's large print books and magazines to pick up a gambling magazine. It's not critical, but it will save you a step shortly if you can spare the inventory space. Continue onwards to the Brand New U and take the shortcut. Once you're back in Royal Flush Plaza, save and prepare for another psychopath battle. If you need weapons, quickly make a few at the maintenance room. When you're ready, approach the mail cart. Carl's a pretty easy psychopath. The main concern is he'll throw bombs at you which can send you flying. His shotgun isn't overly threatening and you will have to reload it giving you opportunities to hit him. Quick steps are nice to help you close the distance as Carl has a tendency to run away from you and throw bombs. You can basically just run him down with knife gloves. Dead Rising 2 isn't exactly the hardest game. After the battle, you'll get another Zombrex for your trouble, which is convenient, because Katie will need one shortly.
Again, we have some time to kill before the next set of scoops. Soon we'll have to engage in a poker minigame to save three survivors. You have to beat them all for them to join you. I'm terrible at poker. Thankfully, there's a little in-game way we can turn the odds in our favor to be more successful. There are three gambling magazines found around Fortune City. While playing poker, these magazines increase your chances of having good cards, and from what I can tell, causes your opponents to make worse decisions such as betting with worse cards instead of folding. We want to pick up these magazines to give us the best chance of success. The first magazine is at Ragazines on the second floor of Royal Flush Plaza. Go ahead and head there now by going up the stairs and across the second level. Inside Ragazines, head to the center axe and it will be on the left side. Now exit out of Royal Flush Plaza onto Fortune Park. The second gambling magazine is at the Shamrock Casino in the Silver Strip. Head towards the Yucatan Casino, but stay on the right side. The Shamrock is on the right side and obviously features a four-leaf clover as a sign that makes it pretty easy to find. Enter the casino and head to the back of the building. The magazine is behind the bar. If you didn't pick it up on the way back to fight Carl the Postal Postman, the final magazine is in the Palisades. Continue to the Yucatan and head through it to enter the Palisades. Move up to the second level and head for Stan's large print books and magazines. With all three magazines, we're well prepared to win at poker. Of course, card games are luck based and anything could happen, so it's absolutely recommended to save here. The closest saves are on the upper level of the Palisades and the center of Fortune Park. Head to either of these save locations and save, or maybe make a separate save file. Then head to the Atlantica Casino. If you're coming from Fortune Park, the poker room will be on the left. If you're coming from the Palisades, the poker room will be on your right, almost smack dab in the middle of the Atlantica. Talk to the survivors here and engage in a game of poker. It's a $100,000 buy-in, so hopefully you've gathered enough money to do it. If not, you're gonna have to grind cash right now. You likely only have enough for one buy-in, which is fine, it's why we took the save. It's likely you'll lose here once or twice, but you should be able to come out ahead eventually. The gambling books do actually help a surprising amount, and the save earlier basically lets you ensure your success. I'm terrible at poker, and I was able to beat this on my second try. For winning, you'll get the three high rollers to join, and you'll be rewarded with one million dollars. By completing this event, your money troubles are basically over for the rest of the game. You're done with the gambling magazines for right now, and you can safely discard them. If you ever need them again, they'll respawn in the same locations. Here, make sure to grab a food or drink item from the poker room. There's beer and other drinks around. We'll need it shortly. Depending on how long your poker game was, you should have gotten a notification for hunger pains. Set your marker to hunger pains now. Exit the poker room and head down to Fortune Park. Run to the center of Fortune Park and save if you never want to replay this poker minigame again, just in case things go sideways. Follow the marker south to Dining at Davies. It will be on your left. Inside you'll find a Richard who won't join until you give him some food. Give him a beer or cocktail from the poker room and he'll join up. Now it's just a matter of getting all these survivors back to the safe house. Head down and enter the Americana Casino. Now cut through it to reach Royal Flush Plaza. Then head back to the safe house through the vents. You'll be rewarded with a bunch of PP, and Richard will provide you another Zombrex. With our million dollars, we can buy all the Zombrex we need easily, so if you're ever in a bind, just head to the pawn shop. You won't really need to, but the option is always there. Fetching females is another easy to complete scoop. You likely got the notification while escorting your previous posse back to the safe house. Set your marker to fetching females. Restock on weapons at the maintenance room since you had to cripple your inventory with gambling magazines. Then head to the restroom in Royal Flush Plaza and take the shortcut to the Palisades Mall. From brand new you, you can just jump over the railing to reach the swim bar in the center. Head up the stairs on the outside to meet Nina, Cora, and Summer, a couple of Charlie's Angels stand-ins. Talk to Cora, and she won't join Chuck until he pays her $10,000. Conveniently, we're a millionaire at this point, so drop some petty cash on Cora and they'll all join up. Then it's just a matter of heading back to the second level of the Palisades, hoofing it to brand new you, and taking the shortcut back to the Royal Flush Plaza. Then it's just a short run from the restrooms to the safe house. On your way back, make sure to grab materials to make a set of knife gloves. There's another psychopath battle coming up. You should have gotten the notification for it. WWJWD or what would John Wayne do? Enter the vents and save your game. Set your marker to what would John Wayne do? If you need to restock on supplies, you can head to Shots and Awe at the Americano Casino to make some quick steps and painkillers. Also make sure you have at least two sets of knife gloves, preferably three. When you're done, head outside and work your way to Fortune Park, and then to the Fortune City Hotel. Inside, head through the lobby to enter the South Plaza and towards the scaffolding in the center. You'll encounter another psychopath battle. 
Seymour, just like most of the other psychopaths in Dead Rising 2, is a complete pushover. Just charge him with knife gloves. Combo him until he knocks you down, then repeat the process. If you ever need to heal, use a quick step or painkiller and continue your onslaught. The fight should be over in less than 30 seconds. On the saw directly in front of you is the six shooter. It's a decent gun and can be used effectively on several psychopaths. Then head towards the maintenance room and pick up Ray. Talk to him and let him know that you've killed Seymour and he'll join up with you. Head back the way you came and exit the Fortune City Hotel onto Fortune Park. Take a save in the center if you wish. You'll probably need to kill some time here. At 6am, the scoops Bank Run and Tape It or Die become available. Our goal right now is Bank Run, so head towards Slot Ranch Casino. Kill zombies around the entrance and keep checking your watch until it's 6am. At 6am, enter Slot Ranch Casino. Set your marker to Bank Run. Head right from the entrance and follow the marker and you'll eventually find Woodrow. Woodrow won't join you until he loots all the ATMs in the casino and food court. Just follow him around and kill some zombies along the way with combo weapons. This part doesn't take too long, but it's a bit tedious and boring. Once Woodrow's finished looting, go ahead and make your way back to the Slot Ranch Casino. Then head back down to Royal Flush Plaza and back to the safe room via the vent. It will be very close to 7am at this point and that means giving Katie her dose of Zombrex. You'll likely get a call right before entering the safe house, so go ahead and run to the security room and give Katie your Zombrex. Woodrow will also give you $50,000 for your trouble. There's an unlisted scoop available now. You'll want to head to the Coconut Sports Town and the Palisades for it. Don't take the shortcut, as tempting as it is, we actually need to get components for a plate launcher, so we're going to go ahead and come prepared. Head through Royal Flush Plaza and enter Fortune Park. Head up through the Silver Strip and take a pit stop at Lowie Wowie. Grab some plates here, then exit and head to the maintenance room on your right. You'll find a cement saw here. You can't pocket the cement saw unfortunately, so you have to carry it back. Try not to use it, you don't want it breaking before you can deliver it. Also make sure you don't lose it when a zombie attacks you. If you're hit, you'll drop it. Make sure to pick it up again. Otherwise head into the Yucatan Casino, then rush through it and enter the Palisades. Coconut Sports Town is to your right on the other side of the Palisades. Head past the stairs and the Venus Touch and enter Coconuts. You won't find anyone here, but head to the back room and you'll zone into the storage area. Head down the stairs at the back and you'll find a bunch of survivors. You can talk to them all if you want, but your target is Wallace at the back by the workbench. He'll request that you find him plates and a cement saw. Conveniently we brought those, so give them to him and he'll make a plate launcher. You'll get the combo card and be able to take the prototype with you, which is awfully nice of him. It's a reasonable weapon and we have it, so you may as well give it a shot, or I guess 60 shots. You can't rescue these guys now, so go ahead and leave them to their own devices. Run around using the plate launcher until it runs out of ammo. The next scoop isn't available until 9am. You will want to stock up on healing items and weapons before this happens. You can take the shortcut at Brand New U to get back to the Royal Flush Plaza to restock. If you already have ample weapons and healing items, that's good too. Regardless, head outside of the Fortune Park area at 9am to get the next scoop. Militia Men is probably one of the most difficult parts of the game and definitely one of the easiest ones to die at. Unlike the mercenaries rifles, the sniper rifles these guys have are actually threatening. There are four snipers total and they're all holed up at various parts of the strip. If you're coming out of the Atlantica Casino from doing the tape it or die case then you should head south past the Fortune City Hotel and continue towards Moe's Imaginations. You'll see Big Earl above you on top of the store. Go ahead and climb onto the cinder block and get onto the roof. These psychopaths all behave the same. If you're far away, they'll try and shoot you with their rifle. If you get close, they'll pull a machete and try to take a swing at you. I don't know what it is, but these guys just deal a lot of damage. Rushdown strategies will work, just like other psychopaths, but will be best used with a painkiller here. Conveniently, these guys sit and wait for you wherever they are. You're free to return to the Americano Casino to mix more drinks if you need them, and if you want, you can go ahead and save after everyone in case you do die, so you won't have to repeat the process. Once Earl is dead, you can eat his food and then head across the street to the Paradise Platinum screens. To get to the roof, you need to head towards the maintenance room and use the ladder on the right side. Up here, you'll encounter Deets. You can use the vents as cover here, so you should have ample opportunities to heal if you need to. Take him out with knife gloves. I actually used the six shooter from Seymour and it was reasonably effective, but not the end all be all. Knife gloves are probably better. Once again, once Deets is done, eat his food to heal before heading back down. The next psycho is above Royal Flush Plaza. Make sure you hug the left wall while heading north to avoid getting shot by him. Getting up here is a bit confusing. You actually want to run past the entrance to the Royal Flush Plaza and head towards the Slot Ranch Casino. There's a maintenance room nearby on your left, and the ladder up leads to the roof of the Royal Flush Plaza. Take out Johnny next. Same approach as always. Just cut him down with knife gloves and heal if necessary. Eat Johnny's food stash once you're done to heal. 
The last one is by far the most confusing to get to. Derek is above the Atlantica Casino, but to get there, you have to go through some service hallways. If you need another pair of knife gloves, go ahead and use the maintenance room south of the Atlantica Casino. Otherwise, from the maintenance room by the ladder to get up to Johnny, head straight across the strip. Then veer to your left towards another maintenance room. Head right and enter the service way. You can restock on health at the snack machines if you need to before heading down this hallway. Enter the authorized personnel only door and head up the ladder to finally confront Derek. Same strategy applies here. Just run up to him and cleave him down with knife gloves and heal yourself if you take damage. These guys won't bother you anymore, which is good because they can mess up survivors you're escorting pretty hard. You're probably low on supplies right now, but don't worry, you should be fine moving forward. Head back down from above the Atlantica Casino and head for the Fortune City Hotel. Go ahead and save in the center of Fortune City Park if you wish along the way. Inside the hotel, head right towards the elevators to find Europa. She won't follow you until you too are in your underwear. Head down to the South Plaza. Head almost all the way to the arena until you reach an unfinished store. It's easy to find, it's right next to the maintenance room. If you cut through the little shortcut shown, immediately on the wall to your right is a display with packages of underwear. Go ahead and strip down to your skivvies, then head back to Europa by the elevators. Talk to her and she'll join. Don't go too far from her though. She'll claim the floor is cold and request Chuck carries her. Go ahead and do it, it's the easiest way to transport survivors anyways. You may have some time to kill here depending on how long you took with the snipers. If it's after 11.15am, you're good to go. Exit the Fortune City Hotel, out to Fortune Park. Now enter the Atlantica Casino. Head through and enter the Palisades. Our goal here is to head to the Clairou Collection Art Gallery on the second floor. It's basically right next to where you fought Slappy. Hoof it to the other side of the Palisades and head up the stairs and turn to your right. Enter the Clairou Collection and head to the back of the store to find Randolph. He's crying about being a terrible artist. Keep chatting him up and he'll request Chuck buy his painting. Go ahead and throw down more petty cash for it and he'll join up. This painting is actually one of the gifts for Katie, so go ahead and pocket it into your inventory. Pick up Europa and head around to Brand New You to take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza. When we get back to the safe house, you'll need a Zombrex. If you're short for whatever reason, you can buy one at the pawn shop next to Clairou Collection on the way. It's $25,000, but what else are we going to do with the cool million we have? Now we're just going from the restrooms to the safe house. You've done this a bunch of times before, you know what you're doing. Inside, you'll want to complete chemical dependency. Up the stairs, Sullivan will be guarding Jared. Head inside the room and give him a Zombrex. Leave and return to the security room to give Katie the funny painting. This is the last gift, and should unlock the achievement Father of the Year. You'll know you'll have given Katie all the gifts as you'll get an additional fulfillment bonus and all the gifts you've accumulated will be removed from the security room. Go ahead and set your marker to know when to fold them. Restock on weapons if you need to at the maintenance room before exiting out of Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park. Head up Fortune Park on the left side. If you threw away the leadership magazine, you should definitely pick it up again now. Don't worry, it's actually on the way. Head into One Little Duck Bingo. Return to the back of the hall and pick up the leadership magazine from the counter. This is actually really important coming up, so don't skip this. Also, if you see any queen zombies here, it's recommended to kill one and hang on to the queen. It'll make a part coming up a lot safer. Head across the street and into the Shamrock Casino. At the back of the casino, you'll encounter Bill. He won't join you until you give him 20 grand. Then he'll request another 5 grand. What a dink. It's a good thing we're a millionaire. You should have another scoop called Shell Shocked, so set your marker. It's at the Americana Casino. I had a lot of problems with Bill getting caught, so I went ahead and went through the Slot Ranch Casino, then Royal Flush Plaza, and dropped him off at the safe house. Good riddance. Head around the right side of Royal Flush Plaza and enter the Americana Casino. Follow your marker to the back of the casino and enter the American Historium gift shop to find Dean. Dean is a war veteran and disabled, but refuses to be carried or offered a shoulder by Chuck. If you have the leadership magazine, you'll be fine. He actually becomes one of the fastest survivors in the game with it. If you don't, you'll need to find him a wheelchair. If you're following the guide, you'll have picked it up on the way to get Bill, so you should be fine. Head back towards Royal Flesh Plaza. Go ahead and stop at the bar in the center of the Americana Casino to pick up some alcohol. Don't mix it, just keep it as beer, vodka, or wine, whatever you find. Enter Royal Flush Plaza and head back to the safe house. Now set your marker to one hit wonder. 
Again, if you find a queen here, it's recommended to pocket it for later. You'll want one. Instead of heading straight to the Slot Ranch Casino, take a detour to the Modern Businessman and put on a tuxedo. It's extremely close by, so it's convenient, and you'll need it anyways. Now head into the Slot Ranch Casino. Follow your waypoint, and you'll get a cutscene with Cher Stand-In BB. The first thing she'll request is a drink, so give her whatever you grabbed from the Americana Casino bar while you were with Dean. Next, she'll tell you to put on a tuxedo, but you're already wearing one, so you're good to go. Despite not wearing any shoes. Next, she wants you to round up some fans. Head behind the curtain and pick up firecrackers. There's also another free Zombrex here you can pick up. Climb the boxes in the back and jump onto the ones on the left side and grab the Zombrex. Once that's done, head to the stage with the firecrackers and start throwing them to attract a crowd of zombies in front of the stage. There's tons here, so just keep hawking them. Once you have a decent sized crowd, talk to BB and she'll direct you to the control panel. You need to perform a Guitar Hero style minigame here, it's just a matter of pressing the buttons as they come. It's not overly difficult, but if you fail, BB will blow up everyone and you'll have to revert to an older save. If you're successful, BB will jump into the crowd. She was a psychopath, but now she's a survivor. Go ahead and throw down a queen to avoid beating her to the point of mutiny by accident. Once that's done, the rest of the crew will join you, so head back to Royal Flush Plaza. On the way back, stop at Sport Trance to pick up a golf club. It may be full of looters, so just cut them down. Golf clubs are on the second level to the left of the stairs. Head back down and get back to the safe house with your party of four. Enter the safe house and meet up with Luz. Give her the golf club and she'll reward you with $50,000 and some extra PP for fulfilling her request to Bent Wood. Go ahead and save. You have a bit of time to kill here, so go ahead and restock on weapons and mixed drinks if you need them. You'll want to be situated at the Atlantica Casino entrance at 6 p.m. Once you're inside, head towards the giant clam on the right side of the casino. You'll also likely get a notification around this time for Stranded Siren. At the giant clam, talk to Tammy. She'll say she's not wearing any underwear, so she must be carried in her mermaid costume. Go ahead and pick her up and hoof it back to the safe house. You can go through Fortune Park to Royal Flush Plaza, or you can use the Palisades shortcut. Once you're inside, you should be very close to the timeline for Case 5-1, Stakeout. Go ahead and enter the security room and wait if you have some spare time. You'll probably have about 10 to 20 minutes of spare in-game time here. You can kill some time outside the safe house or just AFK for a couple minutes in the security room. Talk to Stacey and she'll remind you to head up the stairs to the elevator. You'll meet up with Rebecca and immediately start Case 5-2, The Getaway. Your destination is the Fortune City Hotel. This is a battle, but don't worry too much about weapons or healing items, they aren't really necessary, and they don't help anyways. Exit Royal Flush Plaza out to Fortune Park. Save in the center of Fortune Park if you want, then head into the Fortune City Hotel. Inside you'll find mercenaries by the elevators. Just rush them and slice them to ribbons with knife gloves. When they're all dead, go ahead and use the elevator to head up to the rooftop. You'll have to fight a helicopter here. The way to beat it is to wait for the light on the crane to turn green, then run up to it to winch it down. Then when the helicopter's pulled down, throw things at the blades. It's a pretty easy fight, just make sure to get clear of the crane and the winch once you throw something at the blades it will loop back quickly. There's tons of spotlights and money cases to throw so it shouldn't be much of an issue. The dodge roll can be helpful here to dodge the winch or swinging helicopter. Otherwise it's just a matter of running around, throwing things at the helicopter. It's pretty easy. Once you win, you'll automatically be taken back to the safe house. Go ahead and save. Set your marker for dead or alive. Restock on weapons if you need to. Then head to the restrooms in Royal Flush Plaza to take the shortcut to the Palisades. Exit brand new you and jump off the railing to find Andy. Climb onto the slot machines he's standing on. You'll have to engage in a lengthy conversation here. Do not leave Andy at any point during this conversation as he'll kill himself. Just keep talking and eventually he'll join up. Now cleave through the zombies surrounding the slot machines. Head back up the stairs into the brand new you to take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza. Then just head back to the safe house with Andy and take him inside. You'll have a bit of time to kill now. The next scoop isn't available until 11pm. You can play a few rounds of poker for anti up to try to whittle down your competition. Otherwise, restock on weapons and mixed drinks while killing zombies for PP. At around 11pm, you'll want to start heading towards the Silver Strip. You'll get a notification for Two's Company. Set your marker for Two's Company, make your way to the Silver Strip, and head for Hot Excitorama. You'll encounter two comedians arguing over a trophy. Listen to both of their terrible jokes. Then pick up the trophy and decide a winner. If you give it to Royce, Walter will cry and moan the whole way back to the safe house. If you give it to Walter, Royce won't join you until you give him $5,000. Pick your poison. I just ponied up the cash for Royce since I didn't want to listen to Walter crying. Once you've got them both, go ahead and run back to the safe house. You should know the way at this point. 
You should also pick up a bottle of vodka or whiskey on the way if you can find one. You'll need it shortly. It has to be vodka or whiskey. Once you're back at the safe house, it should be 12 a.m. and you should get a notification for world's most dangerous trick. Go ahead and set your marker. This is a psychopath battle, so go ahead and restock on weapons and or mixed drinks at an Americana Casino if you need to. But before that, Sven will have a request. He'll want a bottle of hard liquor for disinfecting wounds. If you have one on hand, great. If not, there's a box right next to him. This box does usually contain a bottle of vodka. Go ahead and smash it and maybe you get lucky, like me. Give it to Sven and you'll be rewarded with some small potatoes pee pee and another Zombrex for your trouble. Again, go ahead and restock on weapons and healing items before heading to the Atlantica Casino. Inside, continue towards the magic stage. Once you open the door, the battle starts. Our strategy hasn't changed. We're level 40-ish with close to max stats. Use the knife gloves and rush down Reed first. He's the one with the rocket launcher. The fireworks he shoots can blind you, which stuns you and makes you drop your weapons. If this happens, just pick him up again and go rush him. Reed will do a circular swing to knock you away. Just close the distance and clean his clock. He should go down without much issue. Roger is more of an issue. Roger will run away from you like he's Naruto, so go ahead and let him be a dingus on his own and don't really bother to chase him. Eventually he'll get it out of his system and come back. Just move out of the way of his attacks and counter. You can trade blows with him just as easily. After the battle you'll get the combo card for the rocket launcher. Go ahead and pick it up. The next scoop is at 2am so we have some time to kill. Go ahead and kill zombies or replace weapons or mix drinks until 2am rolls around. At 2 a.m. you'll want to head for the Fortune City Hotel. Head up the elevator on the right side, now hunt down Lillian. She'll tell you about how she was separated from her mother at the Atlantica Casino. Head back down the elevator, exit the hotel, and head for the Atlantica Casino. You'll find Camille immediately in front of you fighting a horde of zombies. Go ahead and take them out before talking to Camille. She'll join you, now head back to the Fortune City Hotel and go up the elevator. Take Camille to Lillian and she'll talk her down. We're on the cusp here. There are only six survivors left, believe it or not. If you want to be efficient and complete all the scoops, what you should do now is take Lillian and Camille to the Palisades. Take a quick detour to the Clairou collection and pick up a piece art. It's a small potted plant that can be pocketed. Grab one of these as you'll need it for a scoop soon. This just saves us a trip later, and you'll have more time to complete Anti Up. Then head through the brand new U shortcut and get back to the Royal Flush Plaza before dropping these two off at the safe house. Go ahead and save the game here at the restroom. Now you have a lot of time to kill before the military arrives. It should be about 3-4 to four hours of in-game time. This should be more than enough time to complete the anti-up scoop. You can do a quick lap around Fortune City to get the gambling magazines if you want, but it's beatable without them. Set your marker and head to the back room and play strip poker with the survivors you've rescued. Of course, I'm not a fan of poker, so I made a slice cycle and actually had some fun slaughtering zombies. But to each its own. Do whatever you want. If you want to complete all the cases, finish anti-up. At 7 a.m. you'll have to give Katie her daily dose of Zombrex, so go ahead and do that. Then you'll have a bit of time after this before Case 6-1, Help Arrive starts. You'll want to be adequately prepared with a full weapon and mixed drink set before this starts. At least three knife gloves, one nail bat with the rescue magazine, and the rest of your inventory filled with mixed drinks is the ideal scenario here. Be back at the security room to finish Case 6-1 and start Case 6-2. Dead Rising 2 is about to get significantly harder. Set your marker to Case 6-2, Last Stand, and save your game. You'll now have to deal with mutated zombies that are significantly more aggressive. As long as you keep moving you should be fine, you should have level 3 speed at this point. Head through Royal Flush Plaza to the restrooms and use the shortcut to take you to the brand new U. Head down to the first level and exit the Palisades. Enter Yucatan Casino. Run through Yucatan and exit onto the Silver Strip. Follow your marker, you'll be led to a broken Humvee that bashed through the fence to the maintenance tunnels. Enter this area. Check your map here, and locate a nearby restroom. Go ahead and save here. This next psychopath can be difficult. Then follow your marker to some broken boxes in a busted Humvee and pass through them to encounter Sergeant Boykin. Boykin's really annoying. If he hits you, he'll knock you over, shoot you, and then throw you away. Combo hits don't really work, as he usually will counter with rolling away. Regardless, you should be high enough level, and have enough mixed drinks on hand to trade blows with him. Our strategy hasn't, and probably will never change. Run out to him. Get a hit or two, back out. If you ever need to heal, run away to cover, take your drink, and then get back into the fight. It's pretty straightforward. 
You can head back and save at the restrooms if you wish. This part was a bit odd for me. My recommendation for this is just to take Rebecca back to the safe house alone via the shortcut, then deal with the remaining survivors after. Once you get Rebecca back to the safe house, you'll immediately start an event to fix the gate. Don't worry about it too much, it's pretty easy. Just follow the waypoints around the safe house to pick out the supplies you need. You won't really need to help the survivors here, they're pretty safe, so don't worry about them. Once you get all the items placed, clear any zombies around you and hack the panel by mashing X to shut the door. Then you'll go to the next scene. This will be the last set of survivors you can rescue in Dead Rising 2. Head out to the safe house and to the restrooms in Royal Flush Plaza. Take the shortcut to the brand new you in the Palisades. Head downstairs and go to the Coconut Sports Town and talk to the Tape It or Die crew. They'll join you. Head back up the stairs and back to the brand new you to take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza. Follow the wall and get these four back to the safe room. Now there's only two survivors left. These two are in an unlisted scoop in Fortune Park, right by the restrooms. Go ahead and exit the safe house and head through Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park. Head to the center restrooms. Matthew and Michael will shoot you if you have guns on you. You likely do not, because guns aren't too great in Dead Rising 2, so don't worry about it. If you do, just drop them. With no guns in your inventory, approach them and talk to them, making sure to clear out any zombies. Eventually, they'll join. Matthew is injured, so you can offer him a shoulder. Go ahead and do it as it's easier than having him follow you, especially if you don't have the leadership magazine. Take these two back to Royal Flush Plaza, then back through it into the safe house. Congratulations, you just saved every survivor in Dead Rising 2. All 65 of them. The leadership and a rescue magazine have served their purpose. Go ahead and dump them and use the inventory space for weapons or mixed drinks. All that's left now is to finish the main story, but first, make sure to save. Set your marker to Case 7-2, the only lead. First things first though, restock your weapons and head to the Americana Casino to get some mixed drinks. Don't worry, it's actually a convenient stop on the way to your objective. Quick steps and painkillers again are the go-to. Once you're stocked, make your way towards the Fortune City Arena. Go ahead and save at the restrooms if you want, then enter the arena. Cut through the arena and get to the South Plaza. Follow the arrow through the South Plaza and it will lead you down to the maintenance tunnels. Jump down the stairs and exit into the loading bay. Go ahead and grab a utility vehicle and drive it down the tunnel. These things have pretty weak durability, so try to avoid hitting zombies if you can. Just follow the waypoint and you'll eventually reach a large security door. Use the keypad on the side. Inside you'll immediately be shot by mercenaries. You'll need to climb up the grey cabinet on this side and then get onto the yellow machinery. Then get onto the upper level. Drinking a quick step here will help a bit. Hop the fence and take out the mercenaries with your knife gloves. Get back on track and follow the waypoint to the next keypad. You'll encounter two scientists here who will shoot at you. Go ahead and cut them down, they're pretty easy. You'll get the lab card key and the laptop. You'll immediately start case 73, what lies beneath. Use the elevator to leave this place. All you have to do now is head back to the safe house. Taking the exit on the right will lead you to the silver strip and you'll end up in front of Slot Ranch Casino. Then just hold right to get back to Royal Flush Plaza. From there, you know where to go. Enter the safe house, save your game, and enter the security room. You'll start the facts. If you want to access overtime mode, you need to give TK a Zombrex. This is your last chance to do so. Once you complete the facts, your ending is decided. Set your marker to TK is infected. Give him a Zombrex, and you'll now have access to overtime mode. Exit the safe house. Stacy will radio saying she saw the perp heading to Fortune Park. It's time for final preparations. The final psychopath of the main game will disarm all your weapons, destroying them. Except weapons that are attached to your fists, like the tenderizers, or big surprise, the knife gloves. Make a few pairs of knife gloves, and then a few nail bats to clear zombies out. Don't worry about mixed drinks yet, you'll have a chance soon. Head out to Fortune Park when you have ample weapons. When you reach Fortune Park, Stacy will tell you to head to the Yucatan Casino. Just head north, hugging the left wall until you reach it. Now she'll tell you to head to the elevators at the back. Conveniently, this is next to the restrooms for saving and Baron Von Broadhouse for making more quick steps and painkillers. Max out the rest of your inventory with mixed drinks and save your game. In that order. You don't want to have to mix more mixed drinks if you end up dying. You may also want to stop by the shooting range to pick up a sniper rifle. It might help, but that's optional. Head up the elevator, use the nail bat or knife gloves to carve through the zombies and head up to the roof. Just follow your waypoint. 
This is easily the most frustrating part of the game. Sullivan is by far the hardest part of Dead Rising 2. If you don't have knife gloves, you're supposed to fight him barefisted or with guns as he disarms any melee weapon you have. You have to climb up to him and you will frequently be thrown off this platform because it's just way too small. Hit and run tactics work best here. Getting a single hit on him and then backing out will be the best course of action. Try and beat an attack from him, then back away before getting a quick hit in again. Bombs will drop and break holes in the floor. Obviously try to avoid falling into these as it simply wastes a bunch of time and it's a pain to get back out. You'll have to reclimb all the scaffolding and have to deal with the zombies. Regardless of difficulty, you should have about 6 painkillers and quick steps total. This is a lot of healing and damage mitigation. You should also be close to level 48 at this point. As long as you're putting out some damage with the knife gloves, you'll likely wear him down before he wears you down in all your healing items. After Sullivan, you will immediately start overtime mode. Just like the original, Dead Rising 2's overtime mode has you collecting a bunch of items. The order you're given is basically the most efficient route, as the loop is fairly good. The compromising photo is in the Americana Casino. Just head into the first door on your right, enter the back room, and grab it from the desk. Next up is the gift basket. This is in the Fortune City Hotel. Since you're in the Americana Casino, you can head to the bar to make some quick steps. It will speed up the process. I personally filled my inventory with them. Otherwise, head south to the Fortune City Arena. Cut straight through here to enter the South Plaza. Head through this to get to the Fortune City Hotel. Behind the reception desk, you'll find the gift basket. Pick it up and head out to Fortune Park. Your next objective is to buy the expensive champagne. You'll find this at the Pub of Gold on the Silver Strip. Just head up and it's on the right side. You'll see a giant red-headed girl in a leprechaun outfit on the sign above. Enter the pot of gold and grab the champagne from the other side of the bar. The Case of Queens is next and it's one of the most confusing ones to get. Just head down the Silver Strip and enter the Atlantica Casino. Cut through and enter the Palisades. Now on your left, enter the maintenance tunnel and head right to get down the elevator you used in the previous cases. Follow your marker to find the case. You'll have to jump up some machinery and then jump across to reach it. Collect the Queens. Next target is the mobile headset. This is also in the underground, but it's a ways away, and the underground is full of zombies. Head back up the elevator to the Palisades. You can exit onto the Silver Strip and run down to the Yucatan, or you can go through the Palisades to get to the Yucatan. It's your call. Either way, head to the restrooms at the back of the Yucatan to pick up the headset. It's near the elevators. Now is a good chance to save and restock on quick steps and painkillers if you need them at Baron Von Brothaus. Next target is the USB drive. This is also in the underground. Head down to the utility room next to the restrooms for a quick way down. Use a quick step here and you should be untouchable by zombies. Follow the waypoint. You'll have to cross to the other side. Conveniently, the USB drive is on the way up to the food court, so grab it and head up the stairs to the food court. The last item we need is a lab coat from Roy's Mart. Cut through the food court and then through Slot Ranch Casino to enter Royal Flush Plaza. Grab the lab coat from behind the counter. We have everything we need. It's time to head to the arena and face off against TK. Things are kinda coming full circle here if you haven't noticed. Head through Royal Flush Plaza to the Americana Casino. You'll want to stop at the bar and make sure you have at least one quick step and one painkiller. When you do, just head through the casino towards the arena. Stop at the restrooms on the way to save. This is the last save in the game. Enter the arena, turn right, and follow the waypoint up the stairs. You're stripped of everything you have going into the battle with TK in the arena. You lose all your inventory. Of course, you can cheat a little bit. If you consume a quick step and a painkiller, you'll start the battle with those effects active, giving you an advantage, even though you have no inventory. TK himself isn't too hard. Immediately start the fight by getting yourself a weapon. On the ledge above, you can find a lead pipe and a spotlight. These two should be enough to kill TK with maxed out attack power. Strategy hasn't changed much, even though TK is more complex. Trade blows with him. Eventually, he'll run away and jump down to where you can't follow him. You should use this time to raise Katie and Stacy up using the crank in the middle. TK will try to blindside you from behind here. If you get the timing right, you can stop cranking and dodge in time, otherwise you'll probably take a hit. Sometimes TK will charge you and do your best to avoid this. It causes a quick time event that's annoying, but it is easy to dodge. After he starts charging at you, just dodge him by rolling or moving out of the way. It's pretty simple. The same goes for his wind-up swing, it's actually easy to dodge. If you're standing beside him, he'll probably never hit you with it. Overall, TK is not really difficult. There are a few healing items strewn around, but you should be around 45 plus at this point with maxed out or near maxed out stats. Try and stick to the initial area. If you head to the sides, TK can use fireworks to knock you over and potentially lock you down. Otherwise, just continue to club him with your lead pipe and spotlights until it's all over. That's the end of Dead Rising 2. This gives you the best and canon ending. You've killed all the psychopaths, you've rescued all 65 survivors, you also got all 11 gifts for Katie, and to top it off, we have a million dollars in the bank. Woohoo! 
You should be very close to level 50 now for New Game Plus. Pretty sure you need a grand total of 5 million PP for level 50 and I was about 100k short after the bonuses from the endgame rewards. This is easy enough to get in New Game Plus. Just rescue some survivors and give some gifts to Katie and you should be able to get it extremely fast. And that's that.